Common Sense of a Duke's Daughter, Chapter 139 Resolve and Sincerity I will just take them home with me. At the moment I told that, I got a look of surprise not only by Tori but also Dida. Surprised of my disguise or is it my words? Iris is the lady Dida spoke of, it seems that Dida will be indebted about this. Speaking nicely and smiling, the members of the Vortic family drew a step back. I cannot understand, while tilting my head thinking about that strange reaction, I turned my eyes to Tori. I heard from a little while ago the conversation of you two, have you held a grudge about the path that Dida took that is quite different from you? Ellipsis. Well, is that what your grudge is about, or is it what you most care about him? The present Dida is a desperate gift to his efforts from the growth and what he had to endure while training trying to keep with my grandfather demands, or, I wonder if it is about the difference in talent, but that is something that Dida could not do without either. Quote. Yeah. Good. Tori responded to the words I said like thinking to himself, Dida kept him tied so he cannot harm me. It is a difference in circumstances, it is not a grudge against him or a desire to hurt him, the only one who should bear a grudge could only be him, helpless me. Or my home that is so bad. From Tori's words, Dida rounded his eyes as if surprised. However, if you and Dida were in the opposite position, what would you think? Even I was surprised at myself, a cold voice came out from me, colder than I would have imagined. Even without knowing what him would have to go through to attain his present self, you are just jealous of others, you involve innocent people in your grudges. Well, you just want to blame someone for the frustration of your current situation. Basically you have been thinking to yourself, because of someone else, I am the hero of a tragedy. I am really tired with all of this. Quote. Tori says nothing to that. With my eyes wide open staring at him, even the expression did not change in him. Compassion, pity, I cannot sympathize with your feelings. Like an enclosure to a monologue, there was no reaction from him. Dida, is there still anything that you want to tell him? No, I am satisfied already. He said that and laughed. It was unusual as he doesn't have his usual bright atmosphere, it seemed like his expression or mode was not clear. Then, Dean, restrain him. Dida was difficult to continue tying him, although that was what he was thinking of doing, he shakes his head and starts to act. Everything at his time, come here, you cannot do anything in that state. Dean said to Dida. He understands. If you shift your line of sight from the facts only keeping the feelings. The results will be calamity. Dida understood the intention of his words, and nodded. I take my eyes off them. I also said what I wanted to say. After that, I just pick up that troublesome buddy. I will never forget his name nor I will not allow you to forget, as part of the cause of what happened was you. That's what the I said to Dida. I cannot tolerate what his friend has done or the damage they did to this part of the territory. But apart from that, I think that I should not take my eyes off the Vortic family either. The existence of this family is the other component that caused the incident this time. As for Dida, there is absolutely no way to apologize, it's not like apologizing will solve all the leftover scars of this mess. Also because he cannot apologize instead of his friends, as he was not the main criminal nor knew anything about it. So this is just my determination to let this episode drift away. And the best sincerity. You are a sentimental man not. After I close my mouth. Grouse speaks to Dida. Is that so? I thought that you were caught prisoner, taking your fighting force into account what comes to mind is that they were a big deal, but, when you appeared on your own in the middle of the battle, 
I had this question, why did you allow them to court you? To Grouse's question, Didda just returned a bitter smile. In response to that, Grouse laughs. Oh, you're a good man, okay. I also believe in my old friends, it's a slip. I guess it's a mistake that guys do a lot with friends, but I do not dislike a stupid trusting bastard like you. Grouse said and had a big laugh. I was also in the pit like him. A useless human being, if Milady did not pick me up, I would be like him today. But I will not give up on this path. To his words, Grouse laughs even more. Well, well, what I said. I mean, you are not the only one with luck. Well, certainly you were lucky. If you didn't have a goddess of good fortune in this short-lived life to grasp the extended hand of your lady and do not release it, you would have to create this future all by yourself, somehow. But your lady has given you the opportunity to maximize your results obtained from your efforts and make your future truly your own. I have become such a lucky man that I think I'm sorry to them. Even if I told them that it was my efforts, somewhere I still think that it was more luck than anything. You are not just a man of luck. So, please don't mind what Tori said. Such intent was visible in Grouse's words. Didda shakes his head in response. I also admired the words of Grouse. I guess all the men who can be leaders have this air of respect around them. Are men like Grouse? I absolutely appreciate your lady's eyes, but please be self-weighted. What are you going to get from promising the stock here to us? That's up to you, I will continue to aim for something bigger so this is nothing. As I said, Grouse laughed again. Well, we're going home now that this has finished, because I got now the members of the Vortic family and their former companions in our side, also the guards issue in the city has been solved. You came, please, I said to one of the informers. A good single citizen will tell the guards that the Vortic family has exercised control over a dispute here as if they were a hero of justice, that must be told in the entire city. We are also going, bastards. We return now. In the words of Grouse, men go out one after another from the back door. I was able to see his superiority in the obedience of his people. Sit back. I still have something to tell you. Huh. It was unexpected that Didda came out of the underground corridors at that moment even though I went to Tanya to confirm his safety. Perhaps Didda will not be disturbed by Dawson with questions about his responsibility on this mess. Since he have been taken away, you must say that you were with him, you have rescued the goods and solved the problem jointly with the escorts and him, you cannot say that the leader of the rebellious side was an old friend of his. You cannot say a word about it. Just say that you guys participated in the rescue only. Okay, milady. This time can I go? Can I have you return a bit later? Because the escorts are about to come soon. Didda is unusual. I understand the importance of making up a story but I think I better explain it to him in details. Sadly we don't have much time now. The guards are coming soon. I will let you hear it later Grouse. I turned away from him and spoke to Didda who was in the back part of the room. Princess, as you say. I was relieved about him as he said those words while smiling and grinning, I asked him to accompany me and I also left the room.